This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this lesson, we're going to look at some of the tools we have to balance out an image in terms of its color temperature. And that area is a fascinating one to get into. I mean, we talk about blues being cooler and reds being warmer and the tints that we can apply to an image. All of those things help to balance out the color in the image. So what I've got here are the images that we used in the previous lesson with one exception. I took out the one that was balanced correctly. So in the last lesson, really what we did is we looked at one image and then we manually tried to get the others into sync with it. This time we're going to look at some of the tools we have to help us out. So let's pick one of these images and go into the develop module. What we have is that same hail storm. Now I'm going to move around to some of these other ones in here. Actually, that's the one I want. We want to work with white balance. So we come over here into the basic tools and open them up, and you have a white balance tool right here. You can press the letter W on your keyboard to access the tool, and then you can press W again to send it back. What you need to understand about white balance is that it's not about white. It's about neutrality. It's about finding something neutral, whether it's white, black, or any shade of gray, that's what you're looking for. Most people use that tool, they're looking for something white. Look for something neutral. Now in this image, actually I, I kind of like it the way it is, because it's got that very cool blue look to it, and that's hail, so it's supposed to be cool. A couple of things that we can do here before we get to white balance is number one, we do have some options right over here that will allow us to change what we see in the image. You've got things like daylight. What's happening is the computer is attempting to take the temperature of daylight and apply it to this image. Now if we go cloudy, it's going to change that. It's going to bump it up just a little bit. If we go into shade, so you can see it's changing what's going on over here. It's attempting to use the light source that we say we have in changing out the white balance of the image. And you can play around with these and get kind of creative. Let's go back to that tool. I'm going to press the letter W. And you'll notice that there's different things down here now. We have an auto dismiss option. What does that do? If you leave auto dismiss on, like it is right now, as soon as you click with the tool, it deselects it. If you turn it off, it leaves the tool selected until you decide you don't want to use it again. So I'm going to turn that off. Over here we have something called a loop. Now that's what you see right now. The loop gives you a target area, so you can kind of get a really close idea on where you're clicking. And it also, as you can see at the bottom of the loop, it gives you some numbers. And those are kind of important. We'll talk about those in a second. We can change the grid, if you will, of the loop to something larger or smaller. And the nice thing on the shortcut on this is use the third button on your mouse, your scroll wheel. And if you use the scroll wheel, you can do it that way too. Okay, let's dismiss the tool for a second by pressing W. I'm going to blow up in this area right here. That sculpture is made out of steel, and that steel is neutral. I can use that just as well as I can use the hail or any other thing as long as I know it's neutral. So let's go ahead and press W again and pick up our tool. And we get into this area. Now before I click, I want you to look at those numbers that are at the very bottom of this tool. We have a red of 9.7, a green of 13.2, and a blue of 22.9. What that means is it's not neutral, and it's supposed to be neutral. How would I know that? All of those numbers would be very close to the same number. Anytime in an RGB image where the R and the G and the B are the same number, you actually have a neutral tone or a shade of gray. So what this tool is going to do when I click on it, it's going to equalize the numbers. So watch what happens when I go ahead and click somewhere on the Coca Pelli. Notice the numbers now. 13.3, 13.2, 12.9. Close enough. Let's go ahead and press W. And let's go ahead and take the image back down again. What we've done in a sense is remove the cast on the color by neutralizing that Coca Pelli sculpture. And the rest of the image kind of falls into line. Now at this point we could stop and maybe we like what we have and that's cool. But Sometimes you want to play around here a little bit too. I will say this up front. If you're about to play around, because I want it cooler than this. I mean, I like this. It's very real, I guess. But I think it looked better with a little bit of coolness in the temperature. 
So I want to change that. Before you do that, understand you are looking at this on your monitor. And in order for this to work to print, you need a good calibrated monitor. Don't forget that. So I'm going to come over to temperature. I'm going to cool it down just a little bit. Maybe something, not a whole lot, just a little bit here. And give it a little bit of a coolness. And then I can go to tint. Maybe change that tint. Maybe bring it a little bit more into either magenta or into the greens to balance that out. And anytime I want to see the before and the after, don't forget the backslash. And we can see what it looked like before and after. Or you can press the Y key and you can see them this way. So, I don't know. I think I like that. Now, there's a couple of things we can do at this point. We can say, I want to use exactly what I did over here all the time, because I got a bunch of images I want to apply this to, but I want to do it to them one at a time. And I would write down what? The numbers 3493 and negative 43? No, don't forget you got presets. Presets were over here. You could make a preset for this if you wanted to. But I don't want to make a preset. I want to apply it to the rest of the images. I can select them by holding down the control key. Now, when I do this, I get a sync button over here. And if I click the sync button, it will ask me, what do I want to sync? Now, I've got everything selected. It's not really necessary. I can say check none. The only thing I need is white balance. And if I do synchronize now, it will synchronize all of them based on what I just did. Now, there is another way to do this. If you want to sync them all at the same time as you're working, you have a little button right here. It's called Auto Sync. If you click that button, you see Auto Sync change here. Now, although I'm looking at one image, if I come over here and begin changing the temperature, as you can see, they all change down there. So several ways to impact the white balance of the image, but I don't like to think about it as white balance, is more as changing the neutral tones back to what they're supposed to be. And then all the colors will fall into line. And don't forget, just because you're doing that doesn't mean you can't have some fun here too.